In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how I mix and spread a hard carbon slurry to make a anode for a sodium ion cell for research. I've got a generic overhead stir from a laboratory supplier. On the end, uh, a blade mixing head with a diameter of 50 millimeters. I'll use a lot of blue roll. I'll use some other generic laboratory tools for cleanup. Throughout, I'll clean up and as my solvent, I'll use distilled water. I'll be spreading on this glass pane using a glass rod, also from a laboratory supplier. I'll go through some sticky tape and I'll be spreading onto, as my substrate and my current collector, aluminum foil, 15 micron thick from a battery research supplier. My binder, uh, this is a fairly standard binder, is sodium carboxymethyl cellulose, or CMC for short, that I've purchased from a, a well-known laboratory supplier. And finally, the plasticizer is styrene butadiene rubber, or SBR. The first step of making my slurry usually starts at least a day before I want to mix and spread my slurry. That's because to make the CMC solution, it usually takes quite a lot of time to get the CMC fully dissolved into water. So every couple of weeks, I tend to start with a gram of CMC, to which I add 49 grams of water to make a 2% CMC solution. Now, to mix this, I generally use a magnetic stir, though any mixing method should work. I might put some heat up to 80 or 100 degrees Celsius while it stirs, and I might leave it to stir overnight. But truthfully, the only thing that will really give me a homogeneous CMC solution is time. I generally leave it at least overnight, return and inspect it, and give it another mix to make sure that there aren't some clumps that are more solid than others. Once I have a homogeneous CMC solution, I can use it uh, again and again for several batches of my slurry. I also tend to err on the side of too much water since I know there will be some evaporation before I'm finished with the stirring. Now that I've got my proportions right, I put in my magnetic beam and I'll put it on my magnetic stir. I don't put it on much speed. 200 RPM will be plenty. So once that CMC solution at 2% is fully mixed in, it will look smooth but clearly viscous. I start one batch of my hard carbon slurry with 12 grams of that solution, to which the first ingredient I'll add is my conductive additive. I want to add 0.24 grams of carbon black. Here in the EU, my carbon black is not categorized as hazardous, but you should check your MSDS sheet of your conductive additive. Because it's floating on the top of my solution, I have a little bit of opportunity to scoop the dry material off the top if I feel I've 
gone over my target weight. Now that dry material floating on the top of my solution is really not sinking. And if I were to put it straight into the mixer, it would get thrown out of my cup. So unfortunately, I have to hand stir it first. And once I've stirred in enough of that carbon black that I can't see any of the dry material on the surface, then I have more confidence it won't escape the cup when I start the mixing. Okay, I've just about wetted all of the dry clumps that were floating on the surface of this now very inhomogeneous suspension. It's time to put it in the mixer. So I want to mix this for five minutes at 1500 RPM. You see there's not much liquid in the cup, but I have just enough contact that it'll get a good agitation. Turn on my mixer and I'll start slow and ramp up the speed. And after five minutes, turn that off. Have a look. The next step is to add the hard carbon. I want 11.2 grams of hard carbon into my cup. Also, to make sure that the viscosity of the slurry isn't too high to be effectively stirred by the mixer, I'm going to add about six grams of water. And once again, for the same reasons as with the carbon black, I'm going to need to hand stir that before I put it in the mixer to avoid loss of that dry material. Again, I'm accepting the loss of a small amount of material on the side of the cup, on my tools, and on the mixer head. Once again, I'll go five minutes at 1500 RPM. So that's five minutes, and that, that looks very smooth. If I look hard, I might be able to find a clump here or there. But instead of remixing now, I'm actually gonna leave this to rest overnight. Here's one I made a couple of days ago. Now, when I add the SBR, I'll mix it in. But as soon as I stop mixing, it will start to separate out. It does not stay suspended. So, after adding my SBR, I'm actually going to prepare my spreading surface before I even start mixing it in. The amount of SBR I add for a target of 0.24 grams is actually going to be uh, double because it's in a water suspension, which is roughly 50% water. So for a target of 0.24 grams of SBR in my final dried film, I'm currently going to be adding 0.48 grams. It can be difficult to get right on because as a liquid, I can only add it a drop at a time. Sometimes I have to accept slightly more or less. I like to err on the side of slightly more than 0.48 grams. Once this is dried, it is not water soluble. So you wanna make sure that your tools are really clean before you put them away. So I've gone slightly over, it's 0.49. Now 
Now I'm ready to mix my SBR into the slurry. Right after that, I'll spread it before it has a chance to separate out. That's five minutes. Right, that SBR isn't showing as that blue iridescence, but I want to get that spread as soon as I can. I'll label those and I'll leave them to dry overnight because I want to dry them as slowly as possible to prevent separation, cracking, pinholes and other mechanical defects that are often caused by a fast dry.